You are looking at the stratosphere, one of the signature landmarks across the landscape here in Las Vegas, Nevada. A city where Lady Luck often has the final say on the scoreboard. Welcome everyone to the USA Men's National Team presented by Nike Plus. We're inside the Thomas and Mack Center. This is a city that loves a good show and loves to see a good show. And LeBron James of the Miami Heat knows how to put one on. The NBA Finals MVP fresh off a championship a couple of weeks ago. And the three-time NBA scoring champ, Kevin Durant of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Ready to get his game on. And Kobe Bryant, five-time NBA champ from the Los Angeles Lakers, looking to add another gold to his trophy case. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones alongside Fran Fraschilla. Thanks for coming aboard. This is the first of five games for USA basketball as they go on the road to London for the 2012 Olympics. Bad news as Blake Griffin of the Clippers gone back to Los Angeles to have his knee examined and have an MRI on Sunday. Well, Anthony Davis ran now into the lineup for USA basketball. How does that affect their overall picture? Well, it affects it because they have very little depth on the front line now in terms of the power positions. No Dwight Howard, no Chris Bosh, no LaMarcus Aldridge, and now maybe potentially no Blake Griffin. Well, when you look at the positional breakdown, this is a team right now, as it's constituted, is a little bit heavy on wing players and guards. Well, it's a very versatile team, Mark. They've got speed. They have scoring. They're excellent defensively. Remember, the FIBA game is a game with uh, versatility in it. These guys fit that mold perfectly when you talk about LeBron, Anthony, Durant, Iguodala. Lethal speed for USA Basketball as they move forward. Time for our prime to perform, brought to you by Gatorade. And you know, Coach K is going to need a defensive anchor. He's got one in Tyson Chandler. Well, he's the one legitimate low post rim protector. And it was two years ago, Mark, in the World Championships where he really came into his own. And then he helped lead the, the uh, Dallas Mavericks to the NBA title. This year with the New York Knicks, the NBA's Defensive Player of the Year. Well, the Dominican Republic 0-2 all-time against Team USA, and they're coached by John Calipari, the head coach of the national champs from the University of Kentucky. He's really done wonderful things with this program, Fram, in just two short years. Absolutely. They came five minutes away from going to London. They were beaten on Sunday by Nigeria, a surprise team. But John Calipari has certainly elevated the Dominican Republic's basketball program and he's had a couple of anchors with which to build around. One of them, Al Horford, the former All-Star of the Atlanta Hawks. Horford, their post-presence, and he's really been one of their great all-around players during this two-year run. And Francisco Garcia, the Sacramento Kings, also one of the linchpins of what Coach Cal has been running and doing for this Dominican Republic team. Time now to take a look at our starting lineups brought to you by Nike. First of all, for the Dominican Republic, it's Juan Coronado in the backcourt along with Jack Michael Martinez, Francisco Garcia, Aolis Baez. And for the United States, well, you can take your pick in terms of who actually starts. It'll be Chris Paul, Kobe Bryant, Tyson Chandler, LeBron James, and Carmelo Anthony. Coach K heading up the program going back to 2006. They are 49 and 1 all time with him at the helm. He, he, he and Jerry Colangelo have collaborated, Mark, on a sensational run for Team USA since he took over the job. And Jerry Colangelo, of course, was named the managing director of USA basketball in 2005. Coach K coaching USA basketball to gold medals in. 2008 and most recently in 2010 at the World Championships in Turkey. Well, you and I had a chance to watch practice this week. Tell you, you love their camaraderie. You love the spirit. They all know how to play the game and play with each other. You know, practice time may be an issue normally, but these guys play 100 games of an average NBA season with playoffs. They understand concepts. Most importantly, They've all learned to grow to understand international basketball. Friend, you know, they've only been in training camp for a week now. They began July 5th, a week ago today. They've slowly put their stuff in, their strategies, 
at this point of the operation, what is their strength? Well, it's the versatility of their team, really, and, and great quickness, uh, speed, scoring ability. And don't forget, Mark, you got five guys on this roster who have been all M NBA first team defense, so they can defend as well. The first of five games that you'll see on ESPN as USA Basketball next will take on Brazil from Washington, D.C. on July the 16th. And then they'll head overseas for games against Great Britain, Argentina, and Spain. And you can follow the journey of USA Basketball on ESPN. And you think about this Team USA, they have 10 gold medal winners, five from the 08 Olympics, five from the World Championships in 2010. And that's why I say, Mark, the continuity is here because they understand the FIBA game now. Their average margin of victory in their last two major competitions have been staggering. And we are underway. The Dominican Republic controlling with Jack Michael Martinez. And now Coronado in the backcourt. And the USA already with its first turnover. Carmelo Anthony with the slam. That in a nutshell, Fran, is what they want to do, that's right? That's exactly right. They've got a point guard in Coronado that's not used to this kind of pressure. We mentioned the all-defensive players. Chris Paul among them. First team all-defense in his career already. There's Francisco Garcia. Lost the handle out top. Now they'll run a little offense. Just six on the shot clock. Garcia pulls the trigger from downtown. And it's rebounded by USA. Here's LeBron James. LeBron James with a chance to become the highest scorer in USA basketball history in the Olympics, missing his first jump shot. But boy, what a run he had during the NBA Finals and his MVP performance against the OKC Thunder. Now remember, the Dominican Republic has played a lot of basketball the last few weeks. They have many more games under their belt and practices in Team USA. Nice backdoor cut, and that's going to be a goaltending call. The bucket will go to Juan Coronado after a nice feed. Well, the difference there is the ball was not on the rim yet. If that ball was bouncing on the rim, you can certainly knock it off. At that time, Chandler hit that ball against the glass. That's one of the major differences in FIBA basketball as compared to the conventional NBA rules. And, friend, how tough is it to break out of the habit of not knocking it off the rim when you're allowed to do it here. Well, I think these guys have really adjusted nicely to international basketball, and that's because all these guys on the floor right now have had major experience at the FIBA rules. Now Horford with a nice show and go fouled by Tyson Chandler, and Horford will go to the foul line for a pair. There's that rule now. Watch. See, this ball's not yet up on a cylinder. Ball's hit. If that ball were to get to the rim and it's bouncing around, then you can knock it off. There's no uh, there's no basket interference once that ball's up on the rim. Al Horford at the free throw line for the Dominican Republic. 6-10 post player for the Atlanta Hawks in his regular job. And Horford averaged 18 points and nine rebounds in the recent qualifying tournament. Friend, you alluded to it a little bit earlier. They had a great run. And then it came down to that game against Nigeria. They were just five minutes away from potentially playing against the USA in the Olympics on oh, the next level. That's exactly right. Dominican Republic and Nigeria, either the winner was going to be a major surprise of going to London. It turned out to be Nigeria with 10 American college players, young, young men with Nigerian ancestry, familiar names, many, including Ike Diagu, who played at Arizona State with a star for Nigeria. Now we get a little zone look from the Dominican Republic. Kobe Bryant missing the three and rebounded by Horford in the Dominican Republic. Up court quickly a turnover as Coronado couldn't find the handle. So how much zone, friend, do you think that USA is going to see throughout the course going up to the Olympics? I think they'll see a lot, Mark. I think, uh, you know, the elite teams like Argentina and Spain, they hang their hat mostly on man-to-man. -man, but you'll see some of the second-level teams in the Olympics certainly play Team USA. A lot of zone. And right now, you've got a lot of jump shots out there. John Calipari said to his team today, they're going to have to beat us from outside early. Carmelo Anthony certainly a good outside shooter. Missing that time. USA starting out a little bit cold here. Just one of six from the field. Republic with an early two-point lead. Just underway here in the first quarter. 
Here's Jack Michael Martinez isolated against Tyson Chandler. Ten on the shot clock. Good defense by Chandler. And he forces the air ball. That matchup goes back over a decade because uh, <laughs> Jack Martinez played some high school basketball in Southern California at about the time Tyson Chandler was a high school player. Here's Bryant working against Garcia. Gets the ball screen. Kobe kicks it out to a wide open Paul. And Chris Paul misses the three. They're getting good looks though, Frank. Yeah, but they're against the zone. You don't want to settle for just jump shots. You've got to have an inside out attack. And USA right now just getting their feet wet. But this is the strategy that John Calipari told his team today at the shoot around. They can shoot jumpers. You see the great passing skills of LeBron James with a nice feed inside to Carmelo Anthony for the bucket. Knocked out of bounds. It'll be Dominican basketball. Jose Carrion out of Puerto Rico. One of our three officials, Bill Kennedy and Scott Bolnick. One more look at that pass. Yeah, here's an example. This is what you want to do against the zone, Mark. You want to play the offense from the paint out as opposed to shooting contested jump shots almost a surreal scene a minute ago as uh, Kevin Durant comes off the bench <laughs> <laughs> NBA scoring champion pretty good six man on this crew well remember Dwayne Wade was a pretty good six man back in 2008 it was the leading scorer for Team USA here's Martinez out top to Coronado and Horford tried to put it on the deck and he's fouled by Chris Paul. Interestingly, you know, Chris Paul only had his first practice yesterday. You see the tape wrapped around his right thumb. He injured it last Friday, one day into training camp, and he didn't get back on the court until yesterday and able to go through full contact. He also had Darren Williams, who did not play with full contact in practice until, I believe, after he signed his Brooklyn Nets contract. So it's been a little disjointed early in terms of this training camp. But these guys are very familiar with playing together. Part of the great continuity that Jerry Colangelo from USA Basketball has put together with this program. And he'll be joining us shortly and Carmelo Anthony shaken up on that rebound. Might have gotten hit in the face. Here's Durant pulls the trigger. And that's what they did in 2010 to win the world championships of basketball. That was basically their offense too. Give the ball to Kevin Durant, get out of his way. Coach K has kept things very simple for this team offensively because they know how to play together. Garcia with a bad pass to Coronado. USA leading by three. You'll see from this team, Mark, a lot of pick and roll, spread out, four out, one in. Oh, no, Anthony slipped the screen nicely and is fouled by Francisco Garcia as a couple of subs get set to come in for the USA. Talk about the pick and roll. Take a look. There's a screen, a slip. And Carmelo Anthony, we've said this before in FIBA play, he's almost a prototypical FIBA player because he's strong enough to really pound you inside. But that three-point line at the FIBA range, 22 feet, slightly more than one foot, 22 feet. Um, it's an easy chip shot for a guy that can shoot the ball like that. One of the most potent scorers on the planet, Carmelo Anthony stepping to the foul line. I had trouble saying 22 feet, <laughs> one inch, 1.75 inches if you want to get technical, but it's, it's about a foot and a half shorter than the NBA three And they line. just recently moved it back in the big picture. That's correct? exactly right. And, and uh, you know, as we get into the rules over these next five games, the no more trapezoid lane, you can tell it's now the NBA lane, FIBA and NBA trying to. Bring those rules together. The game of basketball growing globally. Carmelo Anthony at the foul line, second of two on the way. Carmelo will be playing in his third Olympic Games. Uh, people forget that he was a member of that 2004 team that won the bronze medal. Depending on your perspective, some people think they lost the gold, but they won the bronze under head coach Larry Brown. But Anthony wasn't one of the guys that got a lot of playing time on that team. Well, he and LeBron James are both the young players. USA in the middle of a six to nothing run right now here in the first quarter. They lead by four. Ball was tipped into the backcourt. You see, you can do a lot of switching with this team. You got four or five guys that are very comfortable, Mark, switching. We, we talked about versatility offensively, but their defensive versatility is going to be outstanding because. You've got guys out there that can guard a lot of different positions. 
Seven on the shot clock for the Dominican Republic. Orford on the drive. Here's Westbrook. USA in transition. LeBron with the alley -oop. Showtime in Vegas. And that's only the opening act. That in a nutshell is the way they want to play. And the USA now leading 10 to 4. Williams with some good ball pressure on Coronado out top. Orford had it stripped away, knocked out of bounds by Iguodala. Time out on the floor. LeBron James, the NBA Finals MVP, recently winning his first title. This is how he does it, friend. Well, this is going to happen a lot. You, you turn defense into offense. You got guys that can run, and you certainly have guys that can finish at the other end. And coming up in just a few moments, we'll be joined by USA Basketball Chairman Jerry Colangelo, the mastermind behind this blueprint. Back with more right after this. ESPN's coverage of the U.S. on ESPN, kicking off with Newcastle Spurs, Saturday the 18th of August at 4.30. ESPN's coverage of the USA men's basketball national team versus the Dominican Republic is presented by Nike Plus Basketball, Game on World, and in part by Gatorade. Gatorade knows it all begins within, win from within. And Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Welcome back, everyone, inside the Thomas and Mack Center here at UNLV. The United States leading 10 to 4 in game one of their five game pre Olympic tour. Mark Jones, along with Fran Fraschilla, and joined now by the chairman of USA Basketball, Jerry Colangelo. Hey, Jerry, uh, nice to see you. Yeah, Fran, 10 to 4. Hey, hey, summer basketball. You're going to love it. <laughs> hey, it continues. Great. great crowd, and uh, we're getting our feet wet a little bit, and uh, we need this. We needed some competition, and so uh, we, we want to get something out of this game. That's important to us. Tell us how you handled the injuries along the way with the personnel, the injuries to Bosch and Wade and others, Dwight Howard not able to participate in. How were you able to fill those roles? Well, the depth of the national team and the concept of the national team, which we stole from some other countries, has proven to be uh, what we really needed. Uh, there's a lot of depth on the national team roster, and I think this is the proof of the pudding. How have you been able to make it almost vote that players want to participate in USA basketball because it used to be a time not that long ago where you would really have to persuade people to put the jersey you know I think it's a, basically a, a situation where I expressed my passion and the reason I was interested in doing that and I wanted commitments from people who wanted to be part of changing the culture and they bought into it and it's been pretty good yep. and, and speaking of passion I, I wouldn't say cynics but there are probably some people that said a college coach coaching these guys. What did you see in Mike Krzyzewski that led you to believe he could do what he's done with this team? Fred, he's, he's a great leader. He has great respect by players on all levels of the game. And uh, thinking of who I wanted next to me, knowing we were going to have a, a long journey, uh, he fit the bill, and it's been, it's been a great relationship. How do you think he's become a better coach 
uh, when he gets back to Duke because of his experience with Team USA. You know, he's very outspoken about this. He says, without question, he's a better coach because of the experience. He's learned to deal with players in a different way, on a different level, and uh, he's learned a lot from our staff of, of, of coaches, uh, Jimmy Beheim, Nate McMillan, uh, uh, Mike D'Antoni, and so collectively, he's learned a lot in many ways. Jerry, uh, news today coming that Blake Griffin has gone back to Los Angeles to have an MRI and then on Sunday to be examined by yes. Clipper doctors. Uh, what can you tell us about the extent of his injury? Well, from what we understand, he hurt his, uh, his knee at the end of the season and had a decision to make about being sculpted or not. He decided not to. He seemed very strong in camp without any issues. And even yesterday, he had a terrific workout. He felt great last night. He woke up this morning with some discomfort and some swelling. So he went home. And uh, now we await to see what's going to take place. Fortunately, Anthony Davis was here because we wanted to look at him earlier. We couldn't because he had a sprained ankle. This could be an opportunity for him. We'll wait and see. What kind of timetable are you on to make a decision as to whether it's going to be Lee Blake or Anthony Davis? Well, first of all, as an Olympian, we need to find out for sure whether he's in or not. And we may not know for a few days. So I think the plan will be we'll take Anthony with us. Uh, until we get a final decision. Let's talk about what's up, upcoming in the next three weeks. You have a very versatile team, Jerry. Yes. Tell, tell a viewer who's following this team why versatility is so important in the, in the FIBA game. Well, I think quickness and speed on any level wins over size. I really do. Uh, usually what goes along with size is maybe a half a step slow. And so I'll take athleticism and versatility and uh, speed and quickness all day, every day against any competition. And this roster is full of athletes. Jerry, so, when you look at the fact that you guys have won the world championships 2010 and 08 with the gold medal, uh, how surprised are you by the immediate seemingly success that you've had since taking over? You know, Mark, when you uh, commit to something, you, you set a goal, you're, you go on this journey, and you're not satisfied until you reach the, the top of the hill. And we've been able to do that and sustain it. Uh, we now have a lot of gold medalists in our program. You know, six years ago, we didn't have very many. It, it, it's a model that seems to be working right now, obviously, that is working. Is there a next level for USA basketball? Well, that remains to be seen. You know, there's speculation and talk about age limits for the Olympics. That's a long way from being a done deal. I think that's for another day and another discussion. Right now, we have a great program. I'll tell you what makes me feel good. All of our junior teams are gold medalists. The pipeline is absolutely full. These are all the future college stars and the future NBA stars. And so when you have this kind of a system going, I'd hate to tinker with it. Earlier in the week, uh, LeBron James's Nike Skills Academy was here in Las Vegas. They brought the best high school right. players in the country over to practice. What do you think those young guys got out of watching this uh, this uh, Team USA? Well, friend, are you kidding? You think about yourself. <laughs> How would you have felt? I you was know, excited. I, yeah, it would have been pretty exciting. <laughs> and, you know, those kids had a ball. And then we had to use 17 gold medalists uh, in our facility. And they were at practice. And they were in our locker room. And, boy, what a thrill for them. Kevin Durant with another three ball on the way. That's three for him already. Jerry, it's looking like Turkey all over again with his three-point shooting. You know, one thing about Kevin, with the, I think we all know that, he needs to get some shots. Um, he needs to get into a rhythm. And once he does, I mean, he's almost unstoppable. Now, I was talking to Mike Krzyzewski earlier in the summer, and he talked about guys like Westbrook, Love, Durant, have used Team USA almost as a springboard to their NBA careers, Jerry. No question. And I think the 210 team, and you were there in Turkey, you think about what transpired with that group. Derrick Rose went on to have an MVP season. Derek Tyson Chandler was Defensive Player of the Year. We had uh, the scoring leader in, in, in Kevin Durant, and we had three new All-Stars. I think that's a pretty good representation. It certainly is. and. Uh, USA basketball building a little bit of momentum as they head towards London. Jerry, thanks a lot All for right, joining Mark, us. Thank and, uh, you. Good luck. Thanks, Jerry. See we'll you see you in Washington. Way. Take yeah. care. USA basketball chairman Jerry Colangelo has put this program back on its feet. The program had gone 11 and 6 prior to Coach K taking over in 2005, and Kevin Durant leading the way here in the early going with three threes already. Well, the shorter three-point line, Mark, that's really a chip shot for him. 
It's amazing watching Kevin Durant played his one year at Texas, the Wooden Award winner, three time scoring leader, as you mentioned. What about the fact that he, quote unquote, wasn't good enough in 2008 to make this team? That's, that's incredible development or that speaks to the depth of the USA basketball program. Well, Jerry alluded to the fact that there's now a system in place. There's a select team that practiced this week against Team USA, the DeMar DeRozans, the DeMarcus Cousinses. We saw Kyrie Irving put on a show at practice. And then you have the Youth week, you know, the under-17 team that just won the gold medal. So there's a real system here, Mark. It's not disjointed anymore. Yeah. It was so sad to go over to Europe every summer like I did and see my European friends and have to explain why USA basketball mm -hmm. was in the doldrums that it was. You're going over a little earlier these days, <laughs> aren't <am>. you? <laughs> exactly. And staying a little later. <laughs> Chris Paul up court, a little two man game with Durant. Durant to his teammate, James Harden, missing, actually knocked it down, but he stepped out of bounds. Harden making his first. USA basketball appearance. Now especially that deep corner shot. You almost got to straddle the line. You see how he goes into he goes a one two step mm. right there. That the corner three in the NBA you almost got to slide into it like in a defensive stance. The dimensions interestingly enough of the court in FIBA are actually a little bit smaller than the conventional NBA floor. That jump shot good. By Josh Aslan. If you're a Big Ten fan, you remember Josh Aslan who played at Michigan. A solid player and has had a nice career both in the Caribbean, played in the Dominican Republic, now playing in Spain. From the corner, Iguodala with another three ball. Andre Iguodala did a great job defensively for USA basketball in Turkey during the World Championships. Off the turnover, Chris Paul. Durant with a two hand flush. And it's highlight time in the City of Lights. And a timeout. We have a player down on the far side of the court. Looks like Edgar Sosa. Edgar Sosa, who broke his leg last year against Panama in the FIBA Americas champion in the championships. A rather uh, gruesome injury at the time and uh, made a rather quick recovery. Sosa was due to join the Sacramento Kings Summer League team right now being tended to by the team's athletic training staff. We're going to take a short break and be right back after this. at the Thomas and Max Center in Las Vegas Nevada I'm Mark Jones chopping it up courtside with Fran Fraschilla Edgar Sosa of the Dominican Republic formerly of Louisville University being tended to and here's a look at how that injury transpired a few moments ago yep, you see the left left uh, the left knee buckled and it's interesting because he broke the right leg a year ago when we talked to Edgar at practice today he said he's about 80 percent he had a chance to go to the Sacramento Kings Summer League but didn't feel he was ready to go. So that young man's been through a lot of pain and hopefully it's not serious. Sosa played for Rick Pitino. University of Louisville. Uh, played recently overseas as well in Italy. One second to go and Durant. With the turnover, and that's the end of the first 10 minutes of play. Remember in FIBA, they pay 10 four minute quarters. And USA off to a good start here tonight, leading by 14, led by the NBA scoring champ, Kevin Durant. Back with more right after this. Welcome to the front row. 
Get to the heart of the action with a 20 times optical zoom. The new Lumix TZ30 from Panasonic. Official cameras of the London 2012 Olympic Games. ESPN, the ultimate pre-season. Back to the USA men's national team presented by Nike Plus as Dominican Republic head coach John Calipari uh, the University of Kentucky strategizing with his team second year on the J.O.B. for coach Cal and you know it's fair to say that the Dominican Republic basketball Federation had been in a state of flux before he has come in with his staff including Del Harris and Orlando Antigua and really solidified where they are improving on their world ranking and they have been a very transient bunch of late. They haven't been home since early July. Now luckily they did a lot of their training in Lexington Kentucky. So coach Cal was able to spend a lot of time both with his Kentucky team his family and also with this team from the Dominican Republic. He'll fly out of Las Vegas tonight. He will be in Washington D.C. tomorrow morning at about 6 a.m. And it'll be on the recruiting trail. I think Kentucky Wildcat yeah. fans will be relieved to know. Off the Anthony miss. Calipari telling me it started in Puerto Rico, then back to Lexington for two workouts with his team, then the draft in New York on the 28th of June, and then practice the next day in Venezuela. Back to Lexington, then Las Vegas, Los Angeles last night for the ESPYs, and then Philadelphia on Friday, then down to D.C. for the game. And it's life in FIBA basketball. <laughs> Foul called on the play against Chris Paul. He was uh, going to the free throw line. John Calipari told me that they went to the ESPYs last night and sat with Dell Harris and Anthony Davis. And when they said team of the year, he said, Dell, hold my phone. And, and then when he said, uh, uh, when they said Miami Heat, he said, Dell, give me my phone back. <laughs> Maybe next year, of course, they're always in it. You'll watch all the NBA Summer League folks action with Summer League broadband now for only $4.99. Watch live Summer League games on your computer and your mobile device. Go to NBA.com backslash SLBB to learn more. Team Las USA. Vegas Summer League going on right yeah. now. Uh, actually soon. Starts tomorrow, first game. Of course, Orlando's underway. Team USA will go to Washington, D.C. tomorrow where they'll continue their training camp against Brazil on the 16th. Here's Kevin Love from downtown. He had a tough time shooting the ball yesterday in practice and misses that time and ironically he was the NBA's three point shooting champion all star weekend. How about the development of Kevin Love this year 25 points 13 rebounds a game. Second leading rebounder in the NBA. The former NBA's most improved player Horford up top with the catch. Had it knocked away. Quick hands by the United States. Here's Kobe Bryant. Kobe on the baseline, kicks it out to Harden for three. That went halfway down and out. Harden, the guy, Fran, that's used to coming off the bench. A good fit for this team, right? Sixth man, right? NBA Sixth Man of the Year award. There's some talk it was uh, Eric Gordon and James Harden for that last wing spot. Foul on the play. That's going to go against. The Dominican Republic. Actually, it's against James Harden. You know, Eric Gordon played so well in 2010. He was a defensive dynamo along with Russell Westbrook. And on the other hand, James Harden, you know, you talk about continuity. His two buddies, Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant, members of the Oklahoma City Thunder. How much do you think that factored into the decision him making it? It's hard to tell. You know, I thought Eric Gordon, when I saw him in the first four days of practice, was terrific. Especially defensively, but you cannot argue with James Harden gives you, especially coming off the bench with his potent offense. There's Horford. Horford telling me yesterday that the FIBA game has really helped him develop his perimeter game. Shooting a little bit more face up jumpers, working against Kevin Love, trying to back him down. Wheels on him. A whistle and a foul on the play. It looks like it's going to be a well, carry, actually. Bill Kennedy, double dribble. Thought it was a too nice a hesitation move. That's the tenth turnover for the Dominican Republic. He almost hooked Kevin Love right here, but this almost got away with that. 
You know I talked to John Calipari and the coaching staff about Al Horford and they said we've really turned him loose and allowed him to handle the ball in transition shoot some threes. So you're absolutely right Mark about him expanding his offensive game for the Dominican Republic. And we saw a foul a moment ago against the Dominican Republic against Asselin. You hear players all the time talk about FIBA basketball being a lot more physical and in the pick and roll game there's implications there too. correct another whistle yes. and another foul. Well in the NBA Mark especially out on the perimeter you know this there, there's no hand checking there's really no physical play or at least limited physical play. FIBA basketball really is a much more physical game and that's part of the uh, continuity and maturation of a lot of these guys they are used to that now. Well, for more pressure they get the turnover Carmelo blocked but fouled by Al Horford. USA with a nice trap and they get the turnover friend. Well they don't have the great size of a Dwight Howard they do have Tyson Chandler anchoring but where they're really terrific Mark is going to be the athleticism and versatility to be able to switch in the half court but also extend their defense in the full court with some pressure. And that's important because they are going to want to speed the game up against less talented teams and the full court pressure will really force teams to handle the ball a lot in open in open space and, and, and I think it's going to cause some defense to offense situations for Team USA. Melo Anthony knocks down the first of two there's a look at Kobe Bryant who was so prominently important in that gold medal victory against Spain back in 2008 and it was his floater in the lane and his four point play late in the game that really sealed the win for the gold medal over Spain. Few people remember that in the preliminary round Spain pretty much through the game they, they lost by 37. They didn't change any. In fact they pressed Team USA in that first game. Not a big fan of that strategy. I know you're not but uh, <laughs> oh. Wild pass it goes off of Anthony's face out of bounds it'll be. Dominican Republic basketball and Jack Martinez is a good a good passer but you're absolutely right but you know the uh, European or international coaches are very savvy. They're going to all try to stay away obviously from Team USA as much as they possibly can even if it means throwing a game in a preliminary round. Can't believe those words came out of uh, your mouth. No it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Off the air ball from. Ronald Ramon a foul called against the USA fouls against Tyson Chandler. Yeah, second personal foul. Remember in FIBA basketball, you're allowed five, not six personal fouls. And technical fouls count as personals, correct? Yes. Good defense by Paul knocks it away from Coronado. It'll still be Dominican Republic ball. The DR shooting just 20% from the field, facing that stifling USA defense. Jack Ronald Mark. Ramon going to inbound. Yeah, Ronald Ramon, young man from New York City, played at All Hallows High School and a very solid career at Pittsburgh for Jamie Dixon, outstanding shooter. His dad was a very good player for the Dominican Republic. Jumper good by Gerardo Suero. That's a young man that played at uh, Albany this year, University of Albany for Will Brown. He's going to give up his senior year and start a professional career. James Harden a little bit long with the three. Auto out to Ramon again and Ramon still can't find his range. Here's Bryant. USA with numbers. Kobe to Carmelo Anthony and he can't finish but he'll go to the line for a pair. Good unselfishness there by Kobe Bryant. Let's take a look at the Burger King upcoming schedule. We talked about the next game being on Monday the 16th against Brazil. That'll be a Double header. The women will play first at 5:30 Eastern time, followed by the men at 8 o'clock Eastern. Then on the 19th in Great Britain, in Manchester, they'll take on Great Britain. And then the 22nd against Argentina. That game in Spain, and then they'll play against the Spaniards in Barcelona on the 24th. Those last two games, Fran, especially, will be great barometers to see where they are. And Coach K, so good at the build-up, isn't he? No, there's no question about it. And those games were. They're playing those games at the end of this exhibition tour by design because you're talking about the two teams that really could cause Team USA the most trouble. Argentina, of course, 
in the midst and coming to the end of what's been a golden generation of Ginobili and Nocioni and some great players like that. This time the Dominican Republic breaking the full court pressure. Jack Michael Martinez inside with the layup. The lead is down to 12 as we approach six and a half minutes to go here in the first half. This is a good test for Team USA. Dominican Republic not as talented, obviously, but they've been together, as you mentioned, for a month. They grabbed the double team on Kobe, but it, it didn't matter. It kind of works out that way a lot of times for the Black Mamba. Kobe Bryant with the field goal, his first two points. You know what you love about Kobe right here? He was doubled. He just went away from the double team and just took Fortuna one-on-one. -on -one. See, it really wasn't a hard double. He never really trapped the ball out of his hands. So essentially, he just shoots that turnaround jump shot. He's patented. Kobe Bryant, the second leading scorer this past season in the NBA. And he'll have a new teammate this year with the Los Angeles Lakers with the sign and trade with Phoenix and Los Angeles. Steve Nash coming aboard. Kobe will be looking for his sixth NBA title. And we had an interesting conversation after practice yesterday and said, going back to 08 he, th he thought that this team really matured and, and the core of this team still together in the respect that they dealt with the adversity of that Spain game and were able to take the hit when Spain made the run and no. went on to win by double digits. Well that's why I said earlier even though they haven't had a lot of practice time together you see Kevin Durant knocking that ball off the rim and that's a legal play but there is continuity because these guys have played together before the other thing Mark is when you play 100 games a year. And you want to talk about pick and roll defenses or other adjustments. They're all so used to it. And this guy, that three point line for him, that's like taking candy from a baby right now. That's a layup. He's got 14 points on four of four from downtown. Actually, he's got 14. Remember when Rick Barnes told me about Kevin Durant before he arrived to Texas? He said, I have the best player in the country. And I said to Rick Barnes, You mean you've got the best freshman in the country? He said, no, I've got the best player in the country this year. And he, he was proven right. Look at that. That's a drink of water right there. Wow. Well, you know, the scouting reports, friend, you've told me around the world are you try and play some zone and force the USA to become outside shooters. But boy, with Durant, that kind of solves that, doesn't it? Well, you have Durant, you have Kobe, you have James Harden, certainly all the, all those guys. You know, Carmelo Anthony is a proficient jump shooter at the FIBA line. It's an easy shot for him. So certainly we talked about versatility this team has it size will be a factor in one particular game mark and that will be the game against Spain because of the Gasols and Serge Ibaka but remember this for those viewers who are thinking about Spain there's no you no Ricky Rubio this year Rudy Fernandez is coming off back surgery and the King Juan Carlos Navarro has had a very injury played season layup. That's his fifth three pointer and the meter still running 17 points for the Durantula. USA 7 of 16 from downtown shooting a sizzling 44 percent. Jack Michael Martinez nice move inside couldn't finish and USA quick to take that ball off the rim once it hits. You see Durant was guarding a very physical player. Look at this. Rebounded that time by the Dominican Republic. His first miss from downtown. Durant went for the steal. Couldn't get it. And the Dominican Republic with the layup. I swear. The lead is 38 to 21 with five minutes to go here. Bryant tries the long ball. And rebounded by Horford. Interesting scenario right now, friend, as we talk about the perceived lack of height by USA. As Jack Michael Martinez gets that rebound put back, Tyson Chandler on the bench with three fouls. Right, uh, and it, and that's going to be a fact. That's going to be the one Achilles' heel is if he's not able to stay on the court when they get to Olympic play. Durant missing the layup after a great move. Dollar got a hand on it. Westbrook set to check in for the USA. Horford with a mismatch on Williams. Fortuna from way downtown hit that from Reno. Boy, Fortuna had really struggled in the Olympic qualifying tournament in Caracas. 
He's a left-handed jump shooter. And I guess he's just thrown caution to the wind. It is an exhibition game. The lead is down to 12. There's Iguodala into the paint to a wide open Durant. Now he's missed a couple consecutive threes. LeBron had it stripped away out of bounds. It'll be Dominican Republic basketball when we come back. Look outside at the Venetian here in the city of Las Vegas, Nevada. Back with more right after this. live all over your toilet, in the water, in tough dirt, and around the bowl. Which is why the Domestos Germ Killing Range now includes Germ Blaster, Total Blast, and Extended Germ Kill Thick Breach. The Domestos Toilet Cleaning System kills all known germs everywhere. It's a summer of Sevens Rugby on ESPN. Still going, still going. The J.P. Morgan 7s, tomorrow, 7.15 live on ESPN. Cindy Brunson, a dramatic finish between the Sparks and the Fever earlier on ESPN2. Both Tamika Catchings and Candace Parker are headed to the Olympics. Catchings couldn't get the three to go late. And the Sparks won a fifth straight heading into the Olympic break. Coming up at the half, you will hear from both Tamika Catchings and Candace Parker as they prepare to go to London. Mark, Fran, back to you. Okay. Folks, the Nationwide Series heads to New Hampshire, where Kevin Harvick, Casey Kahn, and others will take on NASCAR's Young Guns at the Magic Mile, the NASCAR Nationwide Series in New Hampshire, Saturday, starting at 2.30 on ESPN, and some speedy basketball right now on the court as Coach Mike Krzyzewski's crew leading right now. Krzyzewski could be just the second, will be just the second coach to be at the helm in two Olympic Games, Henry Iba, the other one. And a look at his uh, talented t staff behind him there, Frank. Yeah, you got, we mentioned uh, Mike D'Antoni and Nate McMillan, Jim Beheim, but also as part of the staff, Chris Collins and Steve Wojciechowski of Duke. See Mike Hopkins, Jay Triano, former coach of the Toronto Raptors, and Tony Ronzoni, who has been their advanced scout. Both Steve Wojciechowski and Chris Collins will be with this team all the way through London, so. Who's minding the store back in <laughs> back in Durham? I, I think they're all right. <laughs> I think they're okay. Jeff Capel and Nate James are on the road recruiting. They've got special dispensation from the NCAA. But uh, fabulous experience for Wojo and Chris Collins being around this team. And we talked to them earlier, and they uh, they've learned a lot of basketball being around this group of guys. Suero, after hitting an earlier jump shot, missing that time, the Dominican Republic in the middle of a seven to nothing run. Here's LeBron James trying to put that to an end. As he's fouled by Aslan, he'll go to the free throw line for a pair with 3.22 to go in the first half. Remember, in FIBA basketball, you play four 10 minute quarters. Not the usual four 12 minute quarters in the NBA or two 20 minute halves, which they used to play. That's in right. The FIBA game. LeBron James at the foul line. Coming off an MVP performance in the NBA Finals, getting his first NBA title at the age of. 27 friend and a lot of people forget that you know Michael didn't get his until his first until he was 28. So LeBron I in think, a sense ahead of the curve. I think LeBron would love that career arc. <laughs> Michael six and LeBron we talked about continuity and learning how to play FIBA ball. 51st game that is representing Team USA. So it's started to become second nature for a lot of these guys the rules the adjustment to the physical play. Ramon trapped 
And they peeled him. A three on one coming back the other way. Westbrook inside. And LeBron James oh, fouled by man. Ramon. And you saw them pass the ball well. Friend, in watching practice, you and I saw at times they almost overpassed, didn't well, they? I, how, do you, how do you cure that? Well, I think I think it'll take care of itself once they get to, you know, uh, serious basketball. I think what they all try to do when they get to camp, because they're all the, usually the best players on their teams, Mark, they want each other to know that although I'm a scorer for my team, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to make sure that you look good, too. So there's great camaraderie on this team. We saw it in practice this week. I'll tell you an interesting story the second day of practice when they were still trying to figure out who the last few spots were. Coach K took guys like Iguodala and Rudy Gay and Eric Gordon and he put them on the court in the final scrimmage against the select team of young NBA players Kyrie Irving Drew Holiday and they put a spanking on him. And every player on the team that wasn't on the court the LeBron's the Kobe's Darren Williams they were up cheering. It was almost to say young guys you're still not ready for us yet. Rudy Gay and Eric Gordon amongst the last cuts by USA basketball good defense by Williams five on the shot clock. Here's Horford who steps out. Get another possession Horford missing again rebounded by Iguodala. Wanted to hit LeBron but couldn't. And Westbrook couldn't find a handle on that. Out of bounds that's the fifth turnover for the United States. It will be Dominican Republic basketball with 2.23 to go here. USA leading by 14. This is the first of five exhibition games. And this is turning out to be a really solid test only from the standpoint that you've got a team in the Dominican Republic that has played a lot of basketball together over the last month. And remember you mentioned it earlier they were five minutes away from being one of the 12 teams in the Olympics. So two NBA players it's a, it's a good test. That's going to be an over and back violation. Turnover caused by the harassment. The stifling USA defense the 13th turnover. Friend, you talk about the chemistry of this team and, and Kevin Durant in a lighthearted moment yesterday at practice took a charge and stood in there. I mean took a charge against uh, DeMarcus Cousins who was playing for the select team and his teammates all stood up applauded him as LeBron was part of the crew hits the three applauded KD and then kind of turned and snickered at each other and said we never see him do that during the NBA season. They're all joking. It's probably the first charge that he's ever taken. Well don't tell. Uh, Thunder GM Sam Presti about it. After the three, it's a 17 point lead again. Coronado trying to go inside. Horford with a nice feed inside. LeBron may have got a piece of that. Boy, Al Horford really struggled inside today. Yeah. Timeout on the floor, and when you talk about defense and winning, try 11. NBA championships. Bill Russell. I am a Nikon. Germs live all over your toilet, in the water, in tough dirt, and around the bowl. Which is why the Domestos germ killing range now includes Germ Blaster, Total Blast, and Extended Germ Kill Thick Breach. The Domestos toilet cleaning system kills all known germs everywhere. A summer without football? <laughs> Not on ESPN. Germany v Argentina. Major League Soccer from America. Women's Super League from back home. Brasileiro. Pre-season in the US for Spurs and Liverpool. While the Gunners and the new champs meet in China. So, a summer without football? Not on ESPN. Break. 
couple of minutes ago. This was the scene on the court at the Thomas and Mack Center. Scotty Pippen, Chris Mullen in the middle, and Clyde Drexler and Lenny Wilkins, members of the original Dream Team in 1992. An interesting comparison made by Kobe just a couple of days ago. Basketball standpoint, they obviously have a lot more size than we do. Uh, with Robinson, Ewing, and Malone and those guys. Uh, they were also, you know, some of those wing players were also a lot older. At that kind of the end of their careers, but we have just a bunch of young racehorses, you know, guys that are eager to compete. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. It'd be a tough one, but I think we pull it out. You have to love the unfiltered confidence of Kobe Bryant, and yep. uh, interesting comparison. As uh, Charles Barkley had an interesting retort, saying, "There's only three guys on this team that could have made." The original dream team. Isn't that amazing? 11 <laughs> Hall of Famers on that team. I like what Larry Bird said. He said, they probably could beat us. I haven't picked up a basketball in 20 years. <laughs> Iguodala from outside. Boy, he's found the range from downtown. Andre Iguodala is three of five you know from what, downtown. You know what you love about him? Who would you take? Let me get back to that. Who yeah. would you take? This team or the original 92 team? Uh, it, it, you know, the hardest part is how, how much more athletic players have gotten in 20 years. I think where this team would struggle right now, quite honestly, is size inside without Dwight Howard, no Chris Bosch, obviously. You're talking about Patrick Ewing, you're talking about David Robinson, a Michael Jordan in his prime. I'd have to go with the 92 team. Uh, they, they had a 6 8 point guard. Johnson, look at the average margin of victory. Hey, this team has a 6 8 point guard. <laughs> yeah, you're right. James. Yeah, you got a point. <laughs> you got a point. I take that back. You know what? We'll never know. So yeah. it's just speculation. Well, I'll say this. In yeah. terms of their overall impact on the game, I'd have to say that that original well, 92 team had a sublime impact. And that's how Gasol has talked yes. openly about being in Barcelona as a kid and watching Scottie Pippen and David Robinson and Michael Jordan. That really inspired him to become a great basketball player. You're, you're, you couldn't be more right on. It's a team that changed basketball around the world forever. It brought the world closer together. I think at least three of these guys could have made the team now. I, it, I don't want to get myself in I trouble. I don't want to get myself in trouble with Chris <laughs> Mullen now. And you know, Larry Bird was really hurt at the end of his career. Chris is from my neighborhood in Brooklyn, so. It's <laughs> very in high school in New York. Yep. Well, coming up on the State Farm halftime report, a lot of interesting news and notes. Back in the studio, Kobe Bryant. Right now, getting a breather. And trying to figure out since we've sat down to start this game, anything new on the Dwight Howard front? You talk about a soap opera in Orlando. And Dwight Howard had been rumored to be going to the Brooklyn Nets, and now the Houston Rockets apparently back in the bidding process trying to accumulate some assets. Talk about uh, yeah. Luis Scola, who's going to be playing for Argentina, a member of the Rockets right now, perhaps being amnestied. I, I think make what, room. Yeah, I think what you have in Houston, if if that's the deal that Orlando makes, you have young draft picks, you have a potential lottery pick in the pick that's just gone from Toronto for Kyle Lowry. Durant trying to punctuate a very productive first half for him with another jump shot. And the lead has swollen now to 23 points, their largest of the game. Led by the NBA scoring champ, Kevin Durant. Who ends the first half with 21 points? Carmelo Anthony has nine. Don't forget, coming up at the half, we have the State Farm halftime report as the USA plays its first of five exhibition games. And what a three point shooting display here in the first half, shooting almost 40% from behind the arc, led by Kevin Durant and Andre Iguodala. When we come back, Cindy Brunson in the studio with the State Farm Halftime Report. Los Angeles Clippers part of this team up until earlier today flying back to Los Angeles his ailing left knee set to be examined 
through an MRI and an examination by the team doctor on Sunday. He's still unsure as to his status moving forward. Well, this is a team already without Dwight Howard, LaMarcus Aldridge, and Chris, Chris Bosch. I think it's important for Coach K's group now to come out and play with a lot of defensive intensity and not just treat this as a game that they're up 20 plus points in. Great ball movement, but Darren Williams unable to finish. Thank you. you see the unselfishness of this Team USA squad. 14 assists, Fran, in the first half. We mentioned earlier they're all the leading scorers on their teams, but they all has an inbounds play right there. Right, you can bat that ball off the the basket Horford and Baez did not get a piece of it but again Mark it's important that they all know that the, the who the who the alpha guys are in terms of offensively but they can all score a little bit of contact no call Jose Carrion a referee from Puerto Rico says play on Horford and couldn't get the layup actually that was Baez here's Williams back for USA and Williams with a nice move to the bucket his seven second field goal here early in the third quarter Williams recently signing his 95 million dollar contract with the Brooklyn Nets. I've been a Knicks fan my whole life Mark growing up in Brooklyn it's going to be hard not to root for the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> a lot of excitement. Of course LeBron we talked you talked about Magic Johnson and at 92 team watch LeBron right here. Slips it right behind his back. Part of the picture of unselfishness that Team USA has moving forward. Back with more after this. Whatever happens, we'll see you get two for one on a stunning range of Armani glasses. Vision Express, we'll see you right. into the footballing groove as ESPN's preseason friendlies really give you something to sing about. ESPN, the ultimate preseason. Williams with a couple of quick buckets and USA now leading 54 to 27 USA is going to be competing in Group A in the London Olympics they'll be joined by Argentina Lithuania France Nigeria and Tunisia and of course the top four from each group Group A and Group B will qualify and advance friend and crossover play after that exactly right and Lithuania which just played its way into the Olympics really caught a break because the top four teams that advanced the other three will not see Team USA in the quarterfinals of the knockout round once you get to the quarterfinals it's one game elimination obviously and there was some consternation about Nigeria and Tunisia the two African teams going into pool A because it really allows Argentina France and Lithuania now to stay away from Team USA until the semifinals. And as we look at Group B now, Fran, uh, Spain in that group amongst uh, the yep. contenders. Spain defeating France a couple of days ago in a exhibition game. Well, they're all they're all friendlies right now. They don't mean anything. Here's who the th three best teams are: USA, Spain, and Argentina. France obviously has a number of NBA players. We're expecting Tony Parker to play. The sleeper medalist may be Brazil because they've got Barajal and Nene now back with Splitter. 
Barbosa has NBA experience. And Marcelino, Marcelino Huertas is a very good European point guard who, by the way, spent a year playing high school basketball in the Dallas area. Brazil was the team that gave the United States the closest game of the World Championships in 2010. So out of bounds, it'll be USA basketball. Now Argentina is coming to the end of that golden generation. There's some great young players that uh, Brazil is about to produce. You'll hear about them in the next few years. Looked like there was a little confusion on the inbound pay. They turn it over. Right. Eight and a half minutes to go in the third. Excuse me, Mark. We mentioned it earlier. Remember, uh, Spain is really banged up in the backcourt. That is a big thing. Without rookie Ricky Rubio. No Rubio and Fernandez and Navarro. Both are coming off fairly substantial injuries. Navarro played most of the season, but did not play as well as he's accustomed to because of the nagging injuries. But USA pressure on the inbound pass. Boy, there's no substitute for speed. The quickness of this team is overwhelming. Upper by Coronado off the mark. Out of bounds, it'll be USA basketball. Is there another team on the planet as quick as the United States? No, Mark. If you look at this team right now, you've got five guys that are all big enough to switch all ball screens. Uh, you know, they're versatile both offensively and defensively. You'll see this lineup a lot when they don't see teams with great size. They'll be missing that time as the double team came. United States leading by 27. Ryan guarding up on Suero now. Jack Michael Martinez inside had it partially blocked by Carmelo Anthony. And here's Durant. AD on the move draws the foul from Al Horford. And Kevin Durant will go to the line for a pair. John Calipari told his team at the shoot around today do not look at the scoreboard. Just play with pride for your country. You've already had a great run. You've represented the Dominican Republic well. And I think the same thing for Coach K. You don't want to look at the scoreboard. It's not about winning the game. This is just the first step in a road that's going to take about three weeks. The first game about that far away. We saw the group in Zamona to go, and uh, Durant uh, at the free throw line, the most valuable player of the 2010 World Championships. Friend, in that run, he had games of 38 and 33 points. And really, was the star among stars Remember in the Turkey. Yeah, the championship game was against the, the Turkish team with the great crowd, 18,000. And early in that game, Kevin Durant, look at that defense. A little run and jump by the guards. It's almost an eight-second count there in the backcourt. Same rule as the NBA. Coronado now in the corner. Baez is on the drive. Had it knocked out of bounds by Carmelo Anthony as the fans here uh, Doing the wave. I thought, I thought they liked the ball pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting excited about the ball pressure. Martinez inside. And LeBron with the foul. Martinez will go to the free throw line. The Dominican Republic has missed its last 10 consecutive shots. And LeBron a little perplexed by the call that time. You know, LeBron, one of several athletes that I've spoken to, Fran, that are really looking forward to representing their country and attending a lot of the Olympic events. You know, yeah, absolutely. Saying that, uh, you know, Kobe told me yesterday he's looking forward to the track and field and the yep. soccer competition. And uh, a lot of these guys got out during the games last time in Beijing. And, in fact, a couple of days ago, the USA men's water polo team coming and visiting LeBron James and the uh, they left him a little gear, too. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Did he get the little headgear with the <laughs> covers up the ears? I'd, I'd play him in net any time. 6'8 <laughs> goalie. Remember, I, I know those guys went to see Michael Phelps at the swimming yeah. event in 2008. It's a great experience. Little zone now by Dominican Republic. This is good. Good for Team USA to prepare against the zone. Good ball movement. LeBron coming up short on the three, rebounded by Horford. Ramon, formerly of Pitt. Horford having a tough time shooting. Just one field goal in the ballgame so far. Martinez battling and one. He draws the foul from Kobe Bryant. Yeah, this guy is a terrific rebounder. He's a tough guy. He's kind of a Ben Wallace type for the Dominican Republic. A lot of international experience. It's a guy that averaged 15 rebounds a game last year in the 
FIBA Americas. He mentioned it. He played his high school basketball in California at Artesia High School. Yep. A former teammate of Jason Capona. Armello with the rebound. USA leading 55-31. Bryan on the move, raising up, and Kobe with a little artistry. Remember, it was Kobe Bryant with the clutch plays four years ago that helped them win the gold medal. And we talked, we showed those, Brett, we showed the pools, Mark. And there's no doubt in my mind those other coaches of teams. Nice three point. Oh, Fortuna. By Fortuna. He looked right at LeBron James. Almost to say, I'm going to tell my grandkids about this. <laughs> well, LeBron uh, has enough of those highlights from himself, Kobe. Way strong that time. Approaching six minutes to go here in the third period. Horford on the move gets peeled but fouled by Kobe Bryant. Scott Bolnick, FIBA official from the United States with the call. Well, we mentioned this earlier. Al Horford, you may not see him do this quite as much with the Atlanta Hawks, but uh, because he's the best all around player on this Dominican Republic team. He's pretty, he pretty much has the license to yeah. play both in the open court, around the basket, out on that perimeter as well. Ramon got an open look. Tipped up and rebounded by Carmelo. USA on the move. Bryant to Carmelo. And he's fouled on the play. He's going to go against Al Horford. That'll be his third personal foul. There's that versatility we talked about. Everybody gets out and runs. Of course, all these guys. Right, you talk about Bryant and James and Westbrook and Carmelo. You're talking about some of the best scores in, in the NBA. Well, Anthony at the free throw line. Remember the Olympic team in 2004. Gold medal in 2008. Carmelo over the years has really taken care of his body going back to his days with the Steve Hess with Denver and uh, talked to me a little bit earlier about how much he's looking forward to another Olympic experience. Remember the New York Knicks, which were eliminated in the first round of the NBA playoffs this year in five games by the eventual champion, Miami Heat. Russell Westbrook checking into the game for Williams. You know, Russell Westbrook should think about. Sneaking into the hundred meters in the track and field <laughs> event while he's there. I'll tell you what, I, he I might love, he might advance a round or two. I love this right here. Watch him play defense now. Orford looking inside. Martinez calls for it and receives it. Nice feed, but I guess it's not a good pass if your teammate can't make the catch <laughs> out of bounds. It'll stay Dominican Republic <laughs> basketball. He's a crafty guy. He's always been known as a good passer. Watch this right over his head. Baez, young man that played at Western Illinois, played for the the Leathernecks. How about that? The Leathernecks. Man, you Western bring something Illinois. to the table every time. <laughs> what conference are they in for bonus points? Inside, Durant comes up with a pitch. USA on the move. Out to his teammate, Anthony, with the slam. A 27-point lead for the United States. Carmelo with 13. And a timeout called by Calipari in the Dominican Republic. Now you remember the rule in FIBA basketball, only the coach can call the timeout. And when the ball is dead, John Calipari said, I got to slow this act down. It's not a lounge act. <laughs> we are in Vegas. What is it about Thatcher's Somerset Cider? Could it be that the Thatcher's family has been cider making here for a hundred years? Who knows? But tell you what, one taste of Thatcher's gold and you just know, it's been made by people who care.
Welcome back everyone to look at Tyson Chandler who sat a lot of the first half with uh, foul trouble he had three fouls but you go back to 2008 and Kobe Bryant Mike Krzyzewski leading the way Dwayne Wade was the team's leading scorer he had knee surgery a few days ago to defeat Spain by double digits to take the gold medal after beating them by 37 in round play. And this was labeled the redeem team, friend. Well, this was the culmination of three years of Jerry Colangelo and Coach K's collaboration of putting together a team of uh, unselfish NBA stars. And, you know, the beat rolls on, Mark, because after a lot of these guys move on, there's a very good group of young players coming up the ladder. I think we'll see Kevin Love and Westbrook, guys like that, maybe playing Anthony Davis, certainly playing in 2016. Kyrie Irving had some good moments for the select team. Westbrook thought he had a clean block. A foul called by Bill Kennedy. That's going to go against Westbrook. And Westbrook might have got this clean. Take a look. Oh, I think he did. Boy, Kyrie Irving put on a show this week. Now the select team struggled for the most part. They did get the better of Team USA. They had one good practice. session a couple yes. of days ago. But Drew Holiday and Kyrie Irving really impressed me, Mark. Marcus Cousins also had some he did. good moments. I, in fact, I enjoyed watching the young guys. Uh, Gordon Hayward from the Utah Jazz. Paul George, part of the group. Yep. Demar, Demar DeRozan has really improved. Great group of players in the pipeline for USA basketball moving forward as Baez knocks down the second one. 61 to 35 with five minutes to go here in the third quarter of play. Don't forget coming up on Monday night will be the USA against Brazil from Washington D.C. and boy Andre Iguodala knocks down his fourth three pointer. Well he, he had another solid year. You know what you love about him. He. He gets you 12, 13 points, six assists, six rebounds every night, and he's a great defender. He's a great complimentary player for stars like Durant and uh, LeBron James. That jumper way off the mark, Iguodala with the rebound. He's like a Swiss Army knife, a lot of different functions for Team USA. But Collins really got him to buy into the team concept. Nice feed, Chandler inside with the finish. Westbrook with a nice dime on the play. Tanner starting to break a sweat after those three fouls in the first half. Little high ball screen, two man game. Horford had a look. Puts it back out to Ramon. And rebounded by the United States. There's a good example of versatility. Durant rebounds the basketball, and he's the one that pushes it. Chandler thought he was tipping out to a teammate. <laughs> Andre Guadala. Has been all over the court at both ends and has been very efficient offensively tonight, Frank. Well, he has. And then take a look at Westbrook. He gets inside, feeds a Tyson Chandler, a guy that really used the 2010 World Championships as a springboard to two outstanding seasons for the Mavericks and the Knicks. Off the steal, here's Harden. A three on one. Throws it up. Durant with the flush. You don't really need a point guard mark when you can get out that quickly in transition and have this many guys that handle the basketball. Martinez on the perimeter. Aslan nice speed inside and Chandler with the block. There's the defensive anchor of the team. The reigning NBA defensive player of the year gets it done on offense. Great feed by Iguodala. And John Calipari is going to call another Dominican Republic timeout. A 13 to 1 run makes it a 35 point advantage. And we're talking about a little bit of sloppiness coming out of the gate early for Team USA. Dominican Republic has just been through two weeks of a tournament in Caracas. Maybe the legs are going, but I'm not sure it would matter, Mark, because these guys are out and they are flying. I'm out on the floor with 2.59 to go in the third quarter of play. You know, the marriage between Coach Mike Krzyzewski and Jerry Colangelo 
has been a perfect one dating back to when Coach K was named the head coach in 2005. Their first competition didn't quite work out the way they wanted to. The 2006 World Championships, a little bit of a speed bump losing to Greece, 101 to 95. But since that point, they put together a 49 and 1 record. Three gold medals in the Cuba Americas 2008 and 2010 Olympics and World Championships. And I thought the loss to Greece in 2006 was a great eye opener for Team USA and Coach K. Remember, they struggled with the pick and roll. Uh, you had you had guys that Coach K. He actually embarrassed the Greek team by not knowing their names. It was a great wake up call because Team USA was supposed to roll through that World Championships. They did not, but they've won 37 in a row since. And only one team has come close. Look at Silas Spanoulis, uh, formerly of the Houston Rockets. Yep. San Antonio Spurs, a big part of Greece's victory over the United States. But in the rematch in the Olympics, it was all USA. They won by, I want to say, 22 points in that game. And there were a lot of concerns about the height, the length of the Greece team. Uh, they were blown out by Team USA. Oh, great pressure. Uh, this kind of pressure. Westbrook. That ball hit the, the shot clock mark, so it's a violation, but you saw the defensive pressure of Russell Westbrook. Take a look, the harassment. You can get two to five in New York for that kind of harassment. <laughs> and that ball will hit and hit the shot clock. Whistle dead ball and Dominican Republic ball coming back the other way. Westbrook. Yep. Just suffocating defense. Iguodala. Wow. Check out the bench. Every one of those guys is up right now. This is the camaraderie we talked about. And that's going to be an offensive foul against the Dominican Republic. Mike Krzyzewski told me this spring, he said, Russell Westbrook is one of my favorite players because he's a fearless competitor. You saw glimpses of it on those last couple possessions. Friend, I know you said Brazil has a couple of talented point guards that handle it pretty well. Spain, Rubio's out. I mean, how do other teams fare against this kind of backcourt pressure? Well, here's the deal. As a coach, the way to eliminate size is to make sure the ball never gets to size. And the way you do that is with pickup. Iguodala. Exactly. But you want to pick the ball up as far out on the court as you can and harass the guard play so it's not easy to throw it into the Gasols into Serge Ibaka. And that's what you'll see from this team. Look at this. Wow, Russell Westbrook almost picking Ramon's pocket again. You know, I hearken back to that 2010 World Championship team. One of the indelible images was created in the first quarter. Eric Gordon, then a member of USA Basketball and Team USA in that game, the first quarter against Turkey. He was part of a group that caused three shot clock violations by Turkey. They, yep. they couldn't get into their offense because of the ball pressure. And I think a lot of that is the pride that this team takes. And, you know, Eric Gordon, I, I enjoy watching him play. He had a, a very injury plague season this year for the New Orleans Hornets. He's a guy that you could see on that 2016 team. Westbrook and one using the left hand Russell Westbrook all NBA this year really up the level of his game remember the motivation for guys like Durant and Westbrook they have world championship goals Mark but they don't have Olympic gold yet so guys like Harden and Westbrook Chandler Durant Love. This is a first time for these guys as they head to London. Kobe Bryant telling me yesterday after practice, he sees Russell Westbrook's role on this team, much like Dwayne Wade's was coming into the game and being a real game changer. Your thoughts uh, on that? I think absolutely, and I think even more so maybe defensively on the ball than even Dwayne Wade. But certainly that spark off the bench, you don't lose anything. Iguodala comes up with another steal. So you like this because a team up 40 doesn't have to play this hard. Loose ball out of bounds. 
Alabama USA basketball. And after this one, it'll be a doubleheader on July 16th. That's Monday. Women will tip it off at 5.30 Eastern time, followed by the men at 8 o'clock. Then July 19th, we'll travel across the pond. Great Britain in Manchester at 2 o'clock. You'll see all these games on ESPN. The final two against Argentina and Spain, the 22nd and 24th. All games are going to be airing on ESPN2, and then they'll play the Olympics July 29th. Gino, Gino R.E.M. is... Uh, Women's national team will get together this week for the first time in Washington D.C. They had a training camp before the WNBA season where they were together for a few days in Seattle. But those young ladies have been together for a long time and well, I think they've only got one loss in the last yeah. decade. They will say men and women taking home gold from Beijing in 2008. I always like to see the synergy between the two teams. A lot of the guys from the men's team attending the women's games and cheering them on. Out top, it's Ashley, and then he knocks down the three ball. It's Ashley with the jumper. He's a naturalized member of the Dominican Republic's team because he played in the Dominican Republic as a professional. He's hard enough the ball screen. Iguodala inside for love, and the pass is picked off. DR coming back the other way for Anato with the jump. Rebounded by Chandler. Quick outlet to Harden. There's that Euro step that he loves. Stepping all the way for a layup. Friend, you talked about the naturalization process. Explain me, explain to me how that works because it's important. You got Serge Ibaka right. playing for Spain. How does that all work? Right. FIBA allows you to have one naturalized player on your roster. In Spain's case, case Serge Ibaka. As about a 17 year old came to Spain to start his professional career. So uh, they, they have chosen among a number of very good players to pick him as their naturalized Spanish citizen. Love couldn't find the handle on the pass from Harden, and it was interesting. Uh, Westbrook telling me that Serge Ibaka has been talking a little bit of junk about <laughs> Spain defeating the United States. Couple of teammates he's with a, the he's OKC a young, Thunder. Yeah, he's a young player. He'll, he'll get over it, right? Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. I'm sure Mark and Paul, Paul Gasol said easy, <laughs> easy young guy. But that's a very proud team, Mark. It's a very experienced team with the same coach for the last few years. Spain currently ranked two in the FIBA World Rankings, behind the United States. Got a little uh, mess on the floor. Bill Kennedy, amongst others, wiping it up. In the third quarter, the United States has outscored the Dominican Republic 28 to 12 so far with about 12 seconds to go. John Calipari hasn't gotten beaten this bad since his first year at UMass. Arnado to the basket. And a nice shot. Now, this young guy had a good, solid spring and summer. The team for uh, the team Dominican Republic, very quick. Harden draws the foul on the play, trying to claim he was shooting it. One thing that James Harden has down pat. Around the NBA, I've done enough games. Yeah, got a little bit of a reputation as a, a flopper. <laughs> or in an actor. FIBA, what's oh. wrong with being a good actor? In, in FIBA, that's a part of the game. Absolutely. You, you watch any soccer lately? <laughs> <laughs> Fouls against Coronado, and uh, hey, say what you want to say about it, but Harden earns a trip to the foul line. He's been working out diligently since the end of the NBA season. Uh, working out a lot with uh, Irving Roland and Blueprint Basketball. Getting in the lab. Harden ready for this challenge, trying to get his first taste of the Olympics and a gold medal. And that's the end of the third quarter of play. And a distinct thunder flavor here in the building tonight in Las Vegas. Kevin Durant got the party started with some dunks and his three point shooting. And the maniacal play of Russell Westbrook and the skill of James Harden. More when we come back. Welcome back everyone to the Thomas 
Max Center here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's the USA 79-41 over the Dominican Republic. Let's take a look at our Jeep game track right now. Some of the cogent and pertinent numbers on the night. Kevin Durant leading the way five of six from downtown has 24 points. And Andre Iguodala, not far behind. He has 16 on four of six from downtown for the United States. Mark Jones alongside Frank Fraschilla. And this guy in between us knows something about playing basketball, too. Hall of Famer, Scotty Pippen. Scotty, thanks a lot, first of all, for joining us. Uh, tell us, there's been a lot of talk recently about that 92 team. What was your most indelible memory of going to Barcelona and winning the gold? Well, I tell you, it was really playing with some of the greatest teams uh, to ever play the game of basketball. You look back at that team and um, the way it was assembled, um, some great players, even at the end of their career, were still great players. And just the fact of how we played the game and how we played together and how we were able to bond together so fast. You talk about guys being at the quote unquote end of their careers. Those were the same words that Kobe Bryant used. Yeah, he's in at the end of his career too. <laughs> <laughs> in comparing the 92 version to the 2012 version. Tell us what you think. Give us, give us a score of what you think it would be if the two teams went head to head. Well, I, I just think that looking back at that 92 team, we were well-rounded. I mean, we had good bigs. We had good small forwards, good guards. Uh, we didn't deal with any injuries, so that, that team stayed assembled. Right. Uh, this team is really not what they put together. Okay. Uh, even though they got some great talent, they went out and brought in more talented players. Uh, I just felt like that, that that team was the best of the best. You're being and, gracious, though. Give me a score. <laughs> Who wins by how much? How much? Uh, well, I mean, we would attack this here team. I okay. mean, I, I think from inside, we would be able to attack them with our bigs. And defensively, we would shut them down because we would get up on them as they're trying to do to this right. Dominican team. But I, I, I think we could probably beat this team by 25. I mean, I'd go out in the limb and say, that. Okay. Scotty, one guy that's no longer with us, the great Chuck Daly, did a tremendous job of keeping you guys, all those egos and, and great talents focused. What are your memories of Chuck and how he handled that 92 team? Well, I think you just said it best. I mean, he just kept us happy, you know. Uh, I, I didn't, we, none of us knew what to expect, really giving our summer up and dedicating it to USA basketball, but Chuck made it fun. You know, he allowed guys to really enjoy their summers, but when it came down to business, it was really about playing basketball, focusing, playing hard defense, and playing well together. And we credit a lot of that to Chuck Daly because of the way that he carried himself as a coach throughout his career. What did it mean, Scotty, when you look at where you are in the stratosphere of basketball players and combining international and NBA basketball, you're one of just a couple players to win an NBA championship and a gold medal in the same year. LeBron James trying to do the same thing right now. What does that mean? Well, it's, it's, it's just great. You know, at that time, I was on a very high uh, winning two championship and being a part of a, a great team that they had put together. And, you know, uh, when you're playing such good basketball, you you really want to get on the big stage. And this is what it's about. You know, this USA basketball team, LeBron James just coming off a championship and now having a chance to get on the world stage. Uh, this is what, what, what you dream for. It's really to showcase your talent to the world. And one of the one of the indelible images from the 92 Olympics was the game against Croatia and your soon to be teammate Tony Kukoc you and Michael Jordan had him on lockdown and in seeing the 30 30 documentary on the dream team I didn't realize it was as bad as it actually was what did Tony say to you in the wake of that when you became teammates. He said, you guys tried to kill me. <laughs> but in a, in a good way, uh, I think he realized that we were truly on a mission to really not only shut them down, but win the gold medal. But unfortunately, uh, he was in the way of that a little bit because there was a lot of talk about Tony coming to the Bulls and what he would be able to bring to our team. So we really wanted to welcome him to what it's like playing against NBA players. Speaking of the mission, so many people credit the 1992 team with bringing the basketball world together. As you watch the NBA now and guys from China and Croatia and England and France, does it ever dawn on you the impact that your team had on basketball around the world? Well, I, I think it has now. I mean, when I meet guys like Dirk, guys who are playing in the league, 
from abroad. Uh, you know, they always tend to say that this is the team, the 92 Dream Team, that really got them excited about basketball and really, I think, gave them that hope that someday they could play in the NBA. Scotty, want to thank you very much for joining us and. Uh We'll keep running those computer simulations as to who would win between the 92 team and the current version. But all in all, um, I guess we'll be just hoping that these guys bring home gold in the next month. Thanks for yes. joining us. I, I, whoa, whoa. That one came I think a it's bit time close. for me to go. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Scotty. Thank you, guys. All right. Scotty Pippen, uh, champion with the Chicago Bulls. Almost the victim, a little uh, friendly fire here, Fran. All I know is this. I just saw my life pass before <laughs> my eyes. But you notice the quick hands, Mark? Yeah. The quick hands at the Scotties monitor. Scotty's are yours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, knocked out the signal. Uh, no signal, but I don't think we need one. No. I don't think I need replay tonight. No, not, not, not with it. 86 44 with 7.07 to go. Hey, we have, hey, guess what? Anthony Davis has just made his uh, Team USA debut. Well, Scotty was joining us. Anthony Davis out of the University of Kentucky national champion this year, the national player of the year, replacing Blake Griffin for tonight. I was and Blake Griffin. If you're just joining us, headed back to Los Angeles, woke up this morning with some discomfort in his left knee. He's going to have an MRI on Sunday and be examined by the Clippers team doctor. We're going to move forward from there. We mentioned John Calipari will be on a plane right after this game and head to Washington D.C. The college recruiting period is underway and we were talking before about whether they would he, he said if they qualify it'd be great because half of the arena in London would probably be Kentucky fans. <laughs> they, they travel were, well yeah, right? they travel well but there's another half of the fan base that wanted him to get on the road recruiting so I think. Some Kentucky fans are probably glad he's not going to London. Kevin Love jumps in and draws the foul. It'll be an opportunity for a four point play. Kevin Love finding the range. You know, he was almost an afterthought in 2010 as far as making the team, but really, when you have a guy that passes this well, can shoot the ball, rebound it. He's another one of those guys that fits international play very well. He's a ball mover. And a team facilitator with what he does on, on the backboards. And it's propelled him, Mark, to a couple of great NBA seasons. So one of the defining points with him was uh, coming off of that 2010 World Championship, he really changed his body. He lost about 20 pounds, became a lot more flexible, and that became a little bit of a trend for a lot of bigs around the NBA. Lighter might have been a little bit better, and still works for Kevin Love. He is in the corner. Another look, not hesitating, and knocks down another three ball. Good to see when you consider the fact that he has been struggling a little bit, albeit in practice, shooting that long ball. And the United States, 11 of 30 from downtown, about 37 percent. Love, Love with nine. Well, the young man, Carl Towns Jr., the 16 year old from New Jersey, has gotten a chance here the last six minutes, Mark. This young man plays at St. Joe's High School in Metuchen. But let's go back. We talked about ball movement. Take a look at this. That's facilitation. Is that a word? <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. That young man, uh, Towns, uh, a real talent at 6'11, has a size 20 shoe. Oh, nice pass. pass. Yeah. He, look at this. He gets Fortuna. an assist. He's on the board. Harden with the run out. And Harden. Well, Towns uh, got posterized a little bit there. <laughs> what an experience it has to be, though, for a 16-year-old, though. Now, he plays at St. Joe's in Metuchen, which has produced a couple pretty good players. Andrew Bynum and our own Jay Williams, former Duke star. His team won a state title this year with him as a freshman. Ah, oh, you're going to pass it to the freshman. Towns cleared a little space that time for Coronado. He's, he's only 16. His mom is from the Dominican Republic. I have a feeling that Kentucky will be in his top five schools you think so? when he starts to narrow it down. I don't know why. I have I'm, a feeling. I'm awaiting that verbal. <laughs> Any minute. He's got that Kentucky blue on right now, but there's another Kentucky player, Davis. Look at that, the youngster. Out of bounds, it'll be United States basketball. Take a look at the young man. He's ranked as the number one 
player in the class of 2015 I believe by ESPN U. Uh, speaking of recruiting advantages I mentioned earlier that the entire LeBron James Skills Academy campers the top some of the top 80 players in the country were at practice the other day so Coach K has taken huge advantage of his role as the coach of the United States men's national team and rightfully so this is a great advertisement for uh, for Coach K and Duke basketball certainly for John Calipari as well Chandler was fouled on the dunk attempt he was fouled by Guzman and he'll go to the line for a pair Chandler at the free throw line Good year for him and a, an interesting transition for Chandler with the New York Knicks he really was the voice of them being able to turn it around defensively you know there's there's a little bit of an interesting dynamic friend when you look at Chandler and Carmelo Anthony a couple of teammates with the New York Knicks and uh, Mike D'Antoni a member of the staff D'Antoni was replaced this yep. year and Carmelo Anthony took a little bit of heat initially for that but his play in the wake of the coaching change with Mike Woodson coming in really uh, vindicated him in a sense with Mike D'Antoni certainly still one of the great offensive innovators in basketball and a well respected coach well, I, I believe his son is going to be a senior in high school this year so he's going to plan to take the year off Mike Woodson you mentioned did a very good job at the end of the year Jeremy Lin signed Marcus Camby just been acquired in a sign and trade with the Houston Rockets you got Carmelo Amari and then you got Brooklyn doing their thing at the new Barclays Center getting ready to open right yeah, just still signing six Lopez miles too. away is that the D train? Six mile, yeah. Uptown in the garden. Get my fare for me, please. ESPN's coverage of the USA men's basketball national team versus the Dominican Republic is presented by Nike Plus Basketball, Game on World. And in part by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. I am a Nikon. John Kirkham wrote, Hit me with an offer for the open paddy? Oh, we hear you, Johnny. So how about this offer? Or maybe you'll fancy a bit of this one. We're paying seven places on each way bets in the open championship. Seven places at the open with paddy power. <laughs> we hear you, John Kirkham. Welcome back everyone to the USA men's national team presented by Nike Plus. The United States up against the Dominican 94 to 51 right now. And uh, let's take a look at the Cisco uh, assist of the night. And here's a look. Some great pass in the United States with a ton of assists, 23 in all, Fran, on 35 field goals tonight. Yeah. Now that's outstanding. Especially when you have a team of guys that are great creating their own shot. You know they can get a shot anytime they want. The ball movement has been very good. Very few ball stickers. Very few guys playing with Velcro hands, as my man Steve Lavin would say. LeBron and KD getting a breather right now. How about, isn't it amazing? Two guys that were absolutely battling each other. 
Could be seeing about that for years to come. Yeah, about two, three weeks ago, right? Yeah, LeBron for one says that he wouldn't mind doing it again for years to come. And uh, how about Guzman? Young man played at Bemidji State. Did you ever think we'd say Bemidji State tonight? Not quite. That's a father-in-law went to school there. <laughs> A little chilly up there it for is. a guy from the DR. <laughs> well, That's a is, good recruiting job. Uh, all you need is a parka. Oh, man. <laughs> Whoever recruited him did a nice job getting away from that warm weather. But and they took him on his visit for the summer. <laughs> Chandler up top with the hammer. The United States leading 96 to 52. Tyson Chandler was seven. Guzman couldn't find the handle. It's amazing. I keep looking at Carl Towns Jr. He's 16 years old, Mark. And he's out here with Kevin Love and Tyson Chandler, Russell Westbrook. He'll be a sophomore in high school next year. What a great opportunity. This is something he'll remember for a long time. But he's getting a lot of texts right now as we speak. There's Westbrook on the blow by Russell Westbrook. Man. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of fast twitch Ooh, muscle fiber right wow. there. Russell Westbrook can move. I'll tell you when you coach a guy like this, you 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 heard the cynics during the NBA playoffs complain about him. Too offensive minded. Plays with tunnel vision sometimes, but you're talking about an ultimate elite, elite competitor. He gives it to you on both ends of the floor. You have to live with some of his mistakes because he's such a talented offensive player. And you look at his development, Fran, over the years. I remember him telling me the story. He wasn't offered until late by UCLA. That's exactly. Ben right. Howland, the head coach, had to be convinced no. to offer him a scholarship. Kerry Keating, the coach at Santa Clara, was the guy that really pulled the trigger. Ramon with a three ball. Oh, oh, you might remember oh. Ronald Ramon from his days at Pitt. Man, and some pretty memorable games in the Big East tournament. Williams out to Anthony Davis. Rebounded by Love, and Kevin Love shows you why. He was second in the league in rebounding this past year. We'll go to the free throw line for a pair. Love was the uh, former most improved player of the year a couple of seasons ago. You know, you know all you need to know about Kevin Love this season? He finished sixth in, in balloting for the MVP award. Now think about that. T Wolves are struggling, but yet he had a monster season. I'll tell you what, watch out for the T Wolves now. You got Pekovic, you just got Batum, you've got you've added hopefully a Brandon Roy that can give you 24 minutes a night. If they haven't signed the young man from Russia, Shved yet, I think they're about to do that. Rubio will come back sometime early in the season. We got the anchor in Kevin Love, who obviously wants to win and win now. Yes, he voiced that in no uncertain terms a couple of days ago when being questioned by the media. Got the sense that he was becoming a little bit impatient. Being around guys of this caliber will kind of do that to you, right, Fran? Another turnover created right. by the United States. Here's Williams. Harden for three. The United States shooting pretty well from downtown at about 39%. And we saw what Kevin Durant did from behind the arc in the first class, first half. You see James Harden, a potential zone buster once they get to Olympic play. Hey, speaking of Olympic play, on cue, as Guzman knocks down the baseline, Jay Friend, give me your predictions for gold, silver, and bronze. Well, you know, depending on how it all works in terms of the crossover, you get to the quarterfinals, the three best teams are still USA, Spain, and Argentina. Williams with a sweet crossover. Yeah. I still would not sleep on Brazil. We'll get a chance to see them on Monday and we'll get a closer look. That'll be a lot more competitive game than this one. Well, right? I don't think there's any question. You're talking about Nene and Barajal, who's now healthy, and Barbosa and Splitter. You've got some very crafty veteran players that NBA fans haven't heard of. They certainly can play. Larry Taylor, naturalized right. American. How about Anthony Davis? Davis on the scoreboard. You know what's good about this, Mark? He didn't practice early in the week because of the ankle sprain. So to see him out there is a very good sign. And he injured his ankle in a workout with his new team, the New Orleans Hornets. And Jerry Colangelo asked him to stick around just in case, and that just in case came to fruition in the injury to Blake Griffin. He was back in Los Angeles being examined by Clippers team doctors. Remember, Griffin just recently signed a 
90 plus million dollar contract extension. You talk you talked to some of the some of the players yesterday. And I watched them earlier in the week. Blake Griffin was playing out of his mind in practice this week. He was. Approaching a minute to go here in this one. The United States leading by 50 in control. Biggest lead of the game. Harden weaving through traffic. Couldn't finish. And Davis does. Anthony Davis looked at the bench and flexed his muscles and said, hey, I'm a little stronger than you guys think. <laughs> Ramone out top. Davis almost got the block. Instead, it goes in. Nice oh, move so by Swirl. Well. How would you grade the performance by Team USA today, friend? What well, would you give them out of 10? I'd, I'd say a seven and a half, eight. Okay. They, cert they certainly can play a lot better, but they're up by 50. It's hard to argue with that. But this is the first step in a, in a long road. We know that. They'll get better with each exhibition game. Davis with the three. And one! Welcome to the club, rookie. Calipari. Oh, he points Orlando at his coach. Antigua. He points at his and coach. And Rod Strickland. How come you didn't let me do that during the season? But he was 3 of 20 from behind the arc. That's why, Anthony. <laughs> Anthony Davis knocks down the long ball and says, Coach, you should have been running these for me all year. I got this in my arsenal. What is it about Thatcher's Somerset Cider? Could it be that the Thatcher's family has been cider making here for a hundred years? Who knows? But tell you what, one taste of Thatcher's gold and you just know, it's been made by people who care. Germs live all over your toilet, in the water, in tough dirt, and around the bowl. Which is why the Domestos Germ Killing Range now includes Germ Blaster, Total Blast, and Extended Germ Kill Thick Breach. The Domestos Toilet Cleaning System kills all known germs everywhere. Coming up on Sports Center, our George Smith is at that USA Dominican Republic basketball game, and he will join us. And the latest on Penn State's handling of the Jerry Sandusky case. Coming up on Sports Center. Well, folks, coverage of USA's national basketball teams continues Monday on ESPN2 5:30. It's the ladies first when Maya Moore and Team USA host Brazil. Then Coach K and the men's national team take their turn against Brazil at 8. Brazil USA Monday at 5.30 and 8 on ESPN2 presented by Nike Plus. Anthony Davis going to go to the free throw line and try and complete the four point play. It was interesting before the game uh, John Calipari and uh, members of his staff or Orlando Antigua looked at him and Looked up the clock. Hey, ten minutes to go. Come shoot around and play with us. They wanted to try to convince. Him. They almost had it. They almost had him. I think Anthony almost suited up. But you see, Dell Harris, a longtime NBA coach with great international experience, right there. It is Dell to your back. Rod Strickland, a tremendous NBA player, now on the staff at Kentucky. It's been a great run for these guys. John did a great job over two years. He's built Dominican Republic basketball back. They they came Mark within two Ike Diago threes. And five minutes away from going to the Olympics. John will be on the road tomorrow. Dell is one of the great basketball minds anywhere. There he is. Lives in Dallas now. He's got a great book coming out called On Point. 
very great resource for a lot of young coaches, Del Harris, and well traveled, Del Harris. Well traveled, coach of the, Nash, the Chinese national team in 2004. So the Dominican Republic's going to lose tonight, but they didn't lose their dignity. It's been a good run. And Team USA is moving on to Monday night. They are now 50 and one all time under Coach K. Round of applause. A lot of hand claps. The final score 113 59. Kevin Durant leading the way with 24 points and 10 rebounds, knocking down five threes. Andre Iguodala with 18 points on four of six from downtown. 113 59, the final score. Tune in on ESPN 2 on Monday for a double dip, 5 38. The ladies then the men against Brazil. Coming up next, Sports Center for the presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports for Fran and our entire gang. I'm Mark Jones saying, oh, it's all good, all butter net from Las Vegas. This is ESPN. It's a summer of Sevens Rugby on ESPN. Still going, still going. The J.P. Morgan Sevens, tomorrow, 7.15 live on ESPN. You are watching ESPN. The good times are back for Nigerian basketball. Next stop, London.